this is going to be a very in-depth look at how you actually frame out your fireplace. So on the left over here, we have our dimensions and the studs that are going to be cut to the same lengths are color-coded. And on the right, we have a 3D model so that you can visualize just exactly what's going on as we're talking about it and you can see how the fireplace is put together in real life in a three-dimensional version of our two-dimensional drawing. So I should note that I have done all these measurements based on a perfectly eight feet tall ceiling, but no eight feet tall ceiling is actually perfectly eight feet because you have your flooring, which can take up some room, your drywall, sometimes things just aren't framed perfectly, your ceiling can be a little bit out of level. So before you get going on these measurements, go ahead and measure from your floor to your ceiling that you're going to be installing your framing on. And then that will allow you to use that number and actually calculate some of these numbers that we're gonna go through. So what I would recommend doing is measuring from the floor to the ceiling in each corner. So over here by the wall, this front corner, the middle of the fireplace, and then the two corners on the other side of the fireplace as well. So uh, what I was mentioning about doing these measurements with your measurements that you take in your own room that you're putting your fireplace in, is say that you get a measurement all around of, we'll call it 95 and 1 8 inch. That's what you get. So what I would recommend is having a slightly smaller measurement. Um, so taking your measurement and then subtracting 1 8 is gonna give you a little bit of room to actually put your framed walls up without damaging your drywall. Um, and it'll prevent you from having to really smash in your framed wall into your finished wall. Um, it'll just give you a little bit of space and you'll still be able to secure your framing fine with an eighth of an inch. It's just gonna allow you to set those walls in place a little bit easier if your room is finished, meaning your drywall and, and everything is in already. So say you come up with measurements, raw measurements of 95 and 1 8. We're gonna go ahead and subtract 1 8 inch, and that's going to spit out 95 inches. So the number that we're gonna to wanna to use would be 95. So that is a example. In my measurements, I used 96 here in this number. So that means that this gray, these gray studs are 93 inches because if my total length is 96 and my bottom plate and my top plate are each one and a half inches, then 96 minus one and a half minus one and a half equals 93. So the only other set of studs that would change depending on your ceiling height is going to be these green ones and we'll get to those in a bit. Next thing you'll have to choose is how wide do you want your fireplace. Mine is five and a half feet as you can see 66 inches and that fits this 50 inch fireplace pretty well. It gives a good amount of space on both sides. It fits my room well but you may need to adjust yours and in that case you will adjust some of these other measurements accordingly, except for this rough opening, which again, we'll get to, but that is going to be dependent on the fireplace that you choose to install. So we've gone over these gray studs and these blue plates. Next, we'll get into the actual rough opening and the framing that we need to do to insert the fireplace that we choose. So like I said, this is a rough opening, meaning it is a rough measurement that we're gonna use in order to insert our fireplace into it. 
And I kind of just framed this out as if it were a window. And down here, this is the fireplace that I used and the measurements, the dimensions of it. So our vertical rough opening measurement is 20 and a quarter inch and our horizontal is 46 and 7 eighths inch. So I added a little bit to each one of those measurements as you can see here. This one I made into 21 from 20 and a quarter, which gives me an extra three quarter inch of room, which is great because that way if I messed up small on a cut or my wood is bowed, then I'm not gonna run into any issues getting this fireplace actually into the hole. And same thing over here, did a nice round number, not too far away from the rough opening measurement of 48 inches. Next, we're going to have to decide how high off the ground we want our fireplace to sit. I chose 18 inches. I think that's a good height for an eight foot ceiling. And I don't have any kind of ledge or anything to sit on. So I chose 18. That means I have an inch and a half down here a 15 inch cripple stud and then an inch and a half here for our windowsill. Now this windowsill is going to be the length of our rough opening so 48 inches. Then over here on either side of the rough opening is a jack stud and that is going to be 37 and a half inches and the way that we get to that is this length plus the width of this two by four, which is an inch and a half. So 15 plus an inch and a half is 16 and a half, plus the height of our rough opening, which is 21, and that equals 37 and a half. Then we're going to move into our header. Now, if this were an exterior wall, as a window would be, we would have to do our header a little different, but since this isn't really supporting too much load, um, it's more so there for attaching our backboard into and to give a little bit of structure here. I just went and laid two horizontal two by fours on top of each other. And the length of those is going to be your rough opening plus three inches because you have your rough opening here plus an inch and a half over here and an inch and a half over here. And that would equal 51, which you can see down here. So two of those at 51 inches. Then the next part you're gonna to have to calculate based on your ceiling height is these green cripple studs at the top. So basically what you'll need to do is you will take the height from the ground. So let's call this 18 inches to here plus 21, which is going to equal 39 plus one and a half plus one and a half equals 42. So remember the number 42. Now we're gonna use our 95 inch target height that we came up with at the beginning. And we're going to subtract one and a half because one and a half is the height or the thickness of this two by four at the top. And that is where our green studs are going to uh, attach. So 95 total ceiling height that we want minus one and a half equals 93 and a half. So remember our number here was 42, 42 inches to the top of these yellow headers. And now to the bottom of this top plate, it's 93 and a half inches. So we're gonna subtract 42 and that is going to equal 51 and a half. And you can see that my measurement is 52 and a half here because I was calculating this based off of 96 inch ceilings here. In this case, we're gonna do 95, which will spit out 51 and a half for these green studs. So you need four of those at 51 and a half. And again, make sure you do those calculations based off of your ceiling height. So that covers all of the studs that we're gonna be using. Down here, I have the amount that you'll be using. Again, this amount can change based on if you do a wider or a narrower fireplace. But for a five and a half 
feet long fireplace. This is what we're going to be using. Then over here, you can see how the side wall meets that front wall of the fireplace. And same thing on this side. And back to the front. So again, this is <clears throat> just exactly the same as over here on the left in a 3D model. So you have your bottom plate, you have those cripple studs, you got your window sill, jack stud, king stud, cripple studs, and then they're all at most 16 inches away from each other, um, which is going to be up to code. So then we're gonna move to these side walls. You're gonna need two, and the only thing you're gonna need to calculate here is the length of your top and bottom plate. And so I did that by deciding that I wanted my fireplace to stick out 20 inches away from the wall. I think that's a pretty good distance because it could allow me to put cabinets next to it if I wanted to. It doesn't take up too much of the room. So I have 20 inches to the front here but this bottom plate is three and a half inches wide. So 20 minus three and a half equals 16 and a half inches, which means that this bottom plate here and the top plate, which you can see here in blue, is 16 and a half inches. You're gonna need four of those. And then again, these gray ones will most likely be the same size as these gray ones over here, unless your ceiling is wildly out of level. Alrighty. So that goes through all of the studs that you're gonna need, all the measurements you're gonna to need to calculate, and how it's gonna look when it's actually completed and put together. One other thing that I added in here is this outlet. So right in here, you can see, I added a little outlet box, a little receptacle box, You'll need to bring power into the inside of your framing so that your fireplace has something to plug into and get power. Ideally, it has its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, then go ahead and hire an electrician to put that in for you. If it's impossible to run a new circuit to where you're going, you may be able to get away with branching off um, just depending on your amperage of that circuit but uh, the fireplace does use a decent amount of power, so you want to hopefully at least have it on a 20 amp. Then the actual framing of this fireplace, I would recommend starting out by drawing out an outline on the ground, making sure that it's square and that it's this front wall is parallel to your back wall, so using a carpenter square will allow you to do that. And then in my case, it's going to be 20 inches by five and a half feet. So I would snap some chalk lines, have a nice outline on the floor. Then I would put together this front wall first. And how I would do that would be, I would attach my um, bottom plate to the cripple studs here. So I'm going to mark the center of this bottom plate and I'm gonna put this middle one right at the center there. Then I'm gonna mark the center of this windowsill. And then I'm going to attach these ones by splitting the difference here and here and attach those in the center. And then I'm going to attach the center of this windowsill right on the center of this. Now that I know this is centered on the bottom plate. This is centered in the entire wall, which means my fireplace is going to be centered. And now I can work from the inside out or from the middle out, knowing that everything is gonna be nice and centered. So after that, then you can finish out your fireplace framing. So you throw in those jack studs, then the header. Then you can throw in your king studs and those full lengths on the outside, then those cripples, and then 
top it all off with the top plate at the top. And these side ones, you really will just line up the outsides, uh, these studs with the outsides of the top and bottom plates and attach them using either nails or screws. And then you're just gonna wanna make sure that these walls, you'll put them up one at a time, that they are in line with the outline you drew on the ground. So if you follow your outline and you draw your outline perfectly parallel to that wall, and then you just place your walls in that outline, use a nice long level, make sure they're plumb in both directions, attach them into some structural members of the house, either floor joists, ceiling joists, wall studs. That way they won't go anywhere, they're nice and strong. And then that's gonna be how you actually assemble, measure, cut, assemble, and then put in place all of these walls for your fireplace. And then we'll get into how you're gonna make it look nice and pretty. And then install your actual fireplace and you'll have a new addition to your home.